I think my car had developed an interesting problem. Have a look at the front brakes. This is the passenger side disc. And as you can see, there is some uneven wear. Over here is where the pad is making a contact with the disc. So basically I'm using only 50% of the disc as the top part and the bottom part of the disc are rusty. Now I was told that I can fix that by doing more city driving where I'm gonna be applying the brakes more frequently. That didn't help. Uh, ooh, there is so many cars. Another thing that I was told is that if I was doing some hard braking, it should help again with clearing up that rusty part but as you can see the issue still persists so what i've decided to do is turn that problem into an opportunity and instead of just changing that caliper as i think that what causes the problem so instead of changing that caliper and this disc is just change the whole front setup and do a big brake upgrade but on a budget so that is going to be a slightly smaller big brake upgrade. Now, let's get in the car and I'm gonna tell you all the details and what I'm planning on doing. The reason for my big brake upgrade being on a budget is A, I cannot justify paying around 2000 pounds for a front brakes upgrade on this car. Uh, B is simply having so much stopping power on a car with not that much power output is just not needed and see if I was to for some reason uh, decide to eat only bread and salt for a whole year so I can afford paying 2000 pounds for breaks that means that the following year I just need to eat not even bread as I'm gonna have to upgrade the rear brakes as well as if I was not to do that, the distribution of the stopping power is not going to be in the correct ratios. So for those three reasons, I'm just going to stick with my not as big brake upgrade, which is on a budget. Upgrading my existing brake calipers, carriers and discs to the next generation Z4 uh, setup, front brake setup. The upgrade that I'm gonna get is getting from 300 mm discs to 325 mm disc. That is gonna be able by changing the calipers which accommodate that bigger disc. And even the increase is only by 10%, that is still an increase. And every increase is better than a decrease. To do everything more time consuming and challenging for myself, I decided to go for used calipers and refurbish them myself or at least try and do that as I've never done such a thing before that is gonna be interesting and if I can do it that means you're definitely gonna be able to do it as well now finding use in genuine calipers from a Z4 3 liter SI uh, it appeared to be more difficult than I thought it will be so I found out that the Z4 3 liter SI uses the exact same front set of brakes as a BMW E46 330i and thanks to that I found the calipers that I needed at the price that I wanted to pay off of eBay. After I received the brakes they were in a dreadful condition so I tried to clean them myself with some brake cleaner but that did nothing so I looked on Google what is the best practice to clean rusty brake calipers and the sandblasting was uh, the one that I chose to do and two days later I had my brake sandblasted and the results were outstanding and even better the guy that was doing the sandblasting was only 15 minutes away from home so that sped up the process even more the guy was nearby the cost of the service was relatively inexpensive that was also a bonus uh, for those ones wondering how much it cost it was 15 pounds per uh, side but unfortunately I had quite busy few weeks so I was unable to continue with that project I left the brakes in the boot of the car but after a few weeks they developed rust 
so I had to again sandblast them but I didn't want to spend another 30 pounds on sandblasting them as this project is in my budget so what I decided is spend a few quid on those uh, metal wire brushes and try and polish the uh, get the rust not exactly polishing them but get the rust off of the calipers myself with my electric drill and this is the result and I have to say wow I really didn't expect that these brakes are gonna be so shiny it's just outstanding what you can do with a wire brush I'm not sure if I was able to get that same result without having them sandblasted but now they look just amazing so the next steps now are to prime them paint them and apply some clear coats all right so let's get to work and what we're gonna do first is use a brake cleaner just to make sure there is no dust or anything on the calipers so that is gonna remove the dust then the next product that we're gonna use is a primer so I've opted for this primer from 700 to 1000 degrees I don't think the brake calipers are gonna get to that temperature as this is not a racing car then we have here the color it should be the closest red to a BMW red that's what I was looking for and at the end we are gonna do a clear coat so this is a heat resistant lacquer clear coat essentially the most important thing is to be able to resist the chemicals that they've put on the road on the winter months although I'm trying not to drive it in the winter still there is those occasional times that I drive it uh, one more thing I'm planning on using is a isopropyl alcohol And the first step is applying the primer. Now, we need to shake that for a full minute. So I'm gonna probably speed up that so you don't have to wait for me shaking it for a full minute. All right. So that motion, I've been with a girlfriend for five years, is not the first nature anymore. I'm gonna get tired pretty quickly. I thought I'm gonna last longer. All right, now, let's try. Just the first one is gonna be a very light coat. We're gonna leave it sit like this for five, 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna apply a second light coat on the calipers and the carriers using the same technique, spraying from eight to 10 inches. Okay, now why this keeps on spraying? I cannot let you know that, it's just rubbish quality of the spray. The nozzle is already broken, the spray is probably three quarters full and this already doesn't work. I don't know if I need to clean the front part, what's happening? No, that is 100% broken and that's a bit annoying. Guys, if you know what I may have done wrong, please let me know. All right, now it decided to work. It's the following day now, 
and last night I didn't apply the third and last coat of the primer and I think that was a pretty good decision as now I can see much better the spots that I have missed and the main reason for not doing it last night is as the weather was really bad so it was raining it was windy it was cold but at least I put the cover as you can see so I can keep the calipers dry now the temperature is around 10 degrees so it's not that cold hopefully that is not going to be a problem for the primer to stick onto the metal surface now what you need to do is apply the paint and the paint that i'm going to be using is motif brake caliper spray it is a red paint and what we're going to do is shake the spray for two minutes then spread from 25 to 30 centimeters which is again about 8 to 10 inches the processing temperature on this one is 10 to 25 degrees and the hardening after it hardens after 24 hours so what I'm planning on doing is applying one light coat then applying another coat that is not going to be as light and then the last third coat is going to be really thick one okay I'm not that much worried if I'm going to get some paint runs or some droplets as at the end of the day these are the brake calipers and if I get some it's going to be hardly noticeable Okay, now we're gonna leave them rest for five minutes and then we're gonna apply another thicker coat. Don't worry if they're not all covered with paint. We're gonna fix that in a minute. All right, and it's now time to do the second coat. So I waited about 10 minutes. That second coat, as I explained earlier, it will be much thicker than the first one. Let's see what we're gonna do. What you want to have is very good coverage, even if you get some paint runs, it's better than missing spots, as those spots that you have missed are going to get rusty much sooner. And once you get rust on one place, then that rust is going to quickly eat through the paint nearby. So yeah, better get a paint run than miss a spot. Same thing applies for the primer though, I don't think I've mentioned that. And now because I have applied thicker coat, what I'm gonna do is wait for about 15 minutes before I apply the last third coat. Right, see you in a bit. But now it's time to apply the last and third coat of the paint and see what the result is going to be. Oh my god, I missed the whole spot here. All right, done with painting the calipers. Now we're gonna wait for 24 hours and then I'm gonna apply the lacquer. Lacquer? Lacquer? Well, the last clear coat. Let's wait. The calipers, the carriers, they look nice. The color is nice and solid. 
I haven't missed any spots. Now what I gotta do is apply the clear coat. So this is a heat resistant lacquer. Let's just have a look if there is any specific requirements. Uh, Pre-treatment, the surface should be clean, dry and free of grease. That is the case. The actual treatment, the aerosol should be at a room temperature. Yeah, the best processing temperature, 15 to 25 degrees. Yeah, before use, check the aerosol for two minutes, done. Apply 25 to 30 centimeters. Apply the heat resistant lacquer in several thin layers. Okay, that's not gonna be a problem. Before, before applying the next layer, again, check the aerosol. Okay, allow to dry at room temperature for an hour. Then heat for 30 to 60 minutes at 160 degrees. Okay, I think we may have a problem. Um, how can I heat for 30 to 60 minutes at 160 degrees unless i put them in the oven but i don't want to get the oven stinking uh paint and lacquer so okay i'm gonna have to find a solution to that so give me a few minutes i think i have found a solution or at least the best solution for my case and that is using a heat gun Let's see if that is going to help. It has been an hour now since I applied the clear coat. What I need to do now is heat them up to get them closer to that required 160 degrees Celsius temperature. I don't want to make any big claims here, but I think I came with a pretty good idea how to heat up the calipers and the carriers to a temperature that is going to help for the clear coat to harden. Now, obviously I didn't want to use the oven as that is going to put my health to risk. I don't have a chamber, so what I did is use that radiator on which I have put some baking paper and on top the calipers and the carriers. The temperature is on maximum and the thermostat is set to one quarter to the full. So yeah, that seems to be doing a good job. And now to make sure you're not going to miss the next video in which you're going to see if that experiment turned out to be a successful one, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Now, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.